could grow enough food in just four buildings to end world hunger. In 2016, there are about 800 million undernourished people in the world. As population grows and climate change increases, we'll have more and more problems meeting the food needs of the world. So we need to think of solutions that won't have such a huge impact on the land, that, that won't have such a huge impact on climate change. And it's Western cultural attitudes that have basically pushed insect eating uh, out of many traditional cultures around the world. Many insects have similar nutrient profiles and calorie density profiles to things like the meat that we're used to. Yet farming insects uses far fewer resources, far less water, far less energy, far less land, and creates less waste. How much land do you need? How many, how many resources do you need to basically meet the world's food deficit? And so we spent a couple of years on this paper and we got it published. And what we found was pretty amazing. On just under 50,000 acres of land, you could produce enough mealworms to meet the calorie and nutrient needs of every undernourished person in the world. Tesla's building a gigafactory in Nevada that could get as large as 13 and a half million square feet. Now that's over 300 acres. You could stack mealworm cages about 40 high within the gigafactory. That would give you 12,500 or so acres What that means is that four of those gigafactories, just four buildings, and you could raise all the mealworms to meet all the, the calorie and nutrient needs of 800 million undernourished people in the world. But what may be more practical than building four gigafactories around the world to end hunger would be placing something like 1,500 Walmart-sized factories in areas where distribution would be more feasible, but also where you could utilize what they call organic side streams. So that means the waste from from various farming activities, the, the parts of the plants that we don't eat. Uh, and mealworms do eat these, so they can turn that into the protein that then we would eat. So if you had these Walmart-sized factories in large farming areas, you would basically get free, a free source of feed for the mealworms. As with the Tesla factory, if you're utilizing solar and wind to power these factories, your energy inputs are very small at that point. Uh, mealworms in particular don't require a lot of water, uh, so they will have a much smaller impact in terms of water resource usage. But is it realistic to build these factories? Who's going to pay for producing all these insects? I think there's kind of an Elon Musk-esque entrepreneurial chance here, and that's that it costs a lot less to create this kind of protein. So imagine if you were 
utilizing these factories to create a product, a product that you sell, that you make money from, but that also can benefit from people in developing countries. In fact, you could set some of these factories up in developing countries to create jobs there, but also to create a more local source of food. Coconut flavor. How is it? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> One thing that's great about the, this whole idea is that it's scalable. So you don't just have to have these giant factories uh, around the world with a lot of middlemen. You can also have just tiny little farms that fit inside a person's house. So if you look at, well, let's say there's a, a sub-Saharan African family there's a food deficit in this single household of say 1500 calories a day. Well, they could meet those, meet the, the needs of their family in terms of protein, in terms of all these important nutrients, in terms of the calories, uh, with mealworms just in 10 square meters. I don't want to waste anybody's life here. I'm not wasting a bunch of legs. <laughs> So these crickets were having a good day until they just found it started getting a little chilly. In Thailand, there are a lot of cricket farmers now that are farming crickets for, for food, for human consumption. And a lot of them are doing quite well. So it, it, if we could move this into more places in the developing world, uh, you could create a, not only a food source for a lot of families, but a source of income as well. And this is some footage eternity. you probably don't want to show to anybody who's grossed out about bugs. But you There's some skepticism among some of the entom entomophagists studying this around the world, whether our numbers are, are accurate. Well, one way to find out is for people to get out there and actually start producing uh, some of these small factories. And let's see how, how efficient we can be at producing things like mealworms and crickets. We're not proposing that all the world's food deficit be met solely by insects, but what this illustrates is how little impact insects would have if they were incorporated as a bigger part of our solution to hunger. I, over the last year or so, have actually raised crickets in my basement and mealworms, much to my wife's chagrin. <laughs>